Hey guys, Chris Ray here. Today I want to talk to you about one of my longest running projects, my workspace. Let's get started. Up until June of 2017, my workspace was an entire room consisting of two six-foot desks and one four-foot desk, complete with drill press, sink, and plenty of cabinet space. Then, on June 9th, I moved into my new house in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. I share this house with two other roommates, so a large work area was out of the question. What I ended up with was one four-foot workbench in my bedroom. Now, I've been living here for about 10 months, and over that time, I've been doing whatever I could to make this space more usable. This video series will be going over what I've already accomplished, as well as follow my journey as I figure out better uses of my space. First of all, let's take a look at what my setup looks like right now. Starting on the left leg, there's my meter and my power supply. On the right leg, there's an X-Acto blade, a ruler, my calipers, below that is a tape measure, and my iFixit 64-bit screwdriver set. On the tabletop, there's my headset, the first monitor, and the keyboard and mouse, a pencil cup with some smaller tools in it, one of my notebooks, my helping hands, the butane torch, and the oscilloscope, along with a bunch of soldering supplies on top. I also have a breadboard, a Dremel, and last but not least, my soldering iron. Obviously, this isn't all of my tools. Right now, the tools that can't fit on my desk are being stored in my 3D printer stand. Currently, they can stay where they are, but needless to say, one of my main goals is to get all of my other tools incorporated somewhere on this desk. In order to achieve this, one of the first things I want to do is get rid of the keyboard and mouse. I obviously need them, so I can't just throw them out. So my solution to getting the keyboard out of the way is implementing a keyboard tray under the tabletop. This will actually kill two birds with one stone, as this desk was built at standard counter height to make it easy to solder at. However, as you can probably imagine, it isn't very comfortable to type on at this current height. So not only will adding a keyboard tray keep my keyboard and mouse off my desk, but it will also lower the typing height. Something else that will clear up a load of surface area is getting the monitors off the desk. Right now, this larger monitor is taking up approximately 15 by 9 inches of otherwise usable space. I've been thinking about the best way to get these monitors off the desk for a while now, and although the easiest solution would be a couple of wall mounts, I don't know if my landlord would be too happy with more holes in the wall. That's why I decided to extend the back legs of my desk up an additional few feet past the tabletop so I can mount the monitors to that instead of the wall. To give even more space, I plan to extend these legs past the monitors so I can also mount a small shelf above the monitors. Here's another area that needs to be changed. When I first moved in, this was a good, efficient way to store my meter and my power supply, but I think it's soon time for a change, and here's why. Once the keyboard and monitors are off the bench, there will be plenty of room for this meter to sit on the desk where I can see it more easily. The power supply, on the other hand, is probably still too large to fit nicely on the bench. My plan for this is to remove the face from the rest of the power supply and extend the cable so I can mount the face plate at the back of the desk, but the actual power supply can be mounted under the desk where it's out of the way. The whole reason for moving these tools in the first place is to make room for my next idea to extend this leg an extra 5 inches and install a set of drawers in it. If everything goes according to plan, I should have something that looks like this. Hey guys, thanks for watching the first video in the series. I look forward to see what we can come up with to make this a compact and usable workspace. I also hope that people who maybe want to get into electronics but don't think they have the space or the tools that they need, can use this as an example. Whenever I first got started, I did have a lot of tools and I did have a great workspace. But now that I moved and I don't have what I had access to earlier, I can tell you from experience that you don't need all those things in order to make things. I've been living here for 10 months making the same things that I always have. So guys, make sure to hit that like button. If you like this series, then get subscribed and I'll see you guys next time. See what we can come up. Sorry, I'm not sure.